In this video, I want to demonstrate how to make this assembly of the dowel puller. There are three parts to it. This shaft will be the first part we bring in and it will be fixed. Then we'll add the nut down here. It will have a concentric and a coincident mate. And then we'll add the slider and it will have a concentric and a limit distance mate as shown here. So I'm going to close this. And when you start an assembly, you can have all the parts open as I do. So here's the first part I want to bring in. I'll just control tab to the other parts. Here's the nut. And here's our slider. So I'll go back to the body. Or you can just say file new assembly. But I'm going to start from this part open and I'm going to come up to the file drop down menu. And I'm going to tell I want to make an assembly from the part. It's going to ask me which units I'm working in and I'm working in inch. So I'll say OK. And we'll give it a minute. Then I'm going to come over here. I want to point out a couple of things. Each part that's open will show here. And I can change the first part I want to put in the assembly by selecting it. If there's configurations for each part, I can also choose that configuration that I first want to bring in. I'm going to scroll down here. I want to turn on the graphics preview. So when I come out here, I like to start by selecting the isometric view. And then if I'm not happy with the orientation, I can push tab to make it jump around. But this is the orientation I want. So I'm going to click and that will lock this in the assembly. I just want to show the shade it with edges view. So we see the letter F here, meaning it's fixed. Now at this point, if that's not the orientation I wanted of my first part, I could come over here and I can right click on it and I can tell it to float it and then I can remade it. But this is an introduction to assemblies and I want to keep it very simple. So now that I have my first part in and it's fixed, I want to bring in the next part. So I'm going to go back to the assembly tab. I'm going to go to insert components and I want the nut next. So again, I want the graphics preview on. So I'm going to push my tab to reorient it and get it in roughly the right orientation I want. And if none of these orientations work, that's okay. I'm just going to click and I'm going to place it. The mates will fix it or I can come up here to the move component, drop down arrow, and I'm going to tell it to rotate this component. So I'm going to select it. It's in free drag, and I can just click and hold it and get it in the rough orientation and say OK. So next, I want to mate it. So I'm going to select this internal hole, and then I'm going to hold control, and I'm going to select the shaft. And when I release control, the possible mates that I could add here will pop up. So I'm going to tell it I want a concentric mate. And that will be added. This will allow me to lock it so it can't rotate. And this will let me flip it if it's not in the correct orientation. So if I flip it, it'll do that. And if I flip it again, it will do that. I won't bother locking the rotation for now. So I just click here in white space and that'll end it. So these two are concentric. But I need to mate it another way so that it's fixed. It's positioned this way. For now, I'm going to mate it so that this face touches the face down here, and here at the bottom of this. So it's fully assembled all the way. Now I could pre-select the faces I want to mate as I did previously, or I can come up to the paper clip here and tell I want to add a mate. The mate window will open. I just want a standard mate. I know I want a coincidence, so I can pre-select it. Or I can select my faces and SolidWorks will only show me which mates will work for those selections. So I'm going to select this face and I'm going to rotate around a bit and I'm going to select this face and because I had pre-selected coincident it says you want to make this coincident and I'll say yes I do and I'll say OK and then let's look at our assembly so far. This will still spin which is fine. If I want to stop that rotation I have two options. I can expand this and expand the mates. I can right click on the coincident and I can tell it to lock the rotation and now that will stop. The other option I have would be to mate one of these faces or one of the planes within it parallel or coincident with another plane in another part or the assembly. So I'm going to leave the coincidence rotation locked and continue on from there. So next I want to bring in my third and final component. So again I'm going to come up to insert components. I'm going to select the slider. If I had a configuration that I wanted that wasn't the default, I would select it here. I have the graphics preview on. So when I get out here, I'm just going to click to place it. And now it's inserted. So what I need to do is add the final two mates. So again, I'm going to choose this hole. 
And when I'm selecting edges or faces for a mate, I want to try and think ahead. If I'm going to alter that, I don't want to select that edge or face because that'll interfere with the mate and make it corrupt. So I've selected this face again. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to select this shaft, OD. I'm going to release control. My mates will pop up. As long as I don't move my mouse, this will show up. If I do move my mouse too much, that will go away. So I want to add concentric. And again, I can lock the rotation or not worry about it. And I'm not going to worry about it. And I can flip the mate alignment if I'm not happy with it. I'm not going to lock the rotation because in the real world, this would spin. So now I have this. And what I need to do is I need to limit its distance. So when we use this, this face would touch this face to stop its motion. And then when it comes down, this face would touch this to stop its motion. So we're going to limit the distance between these two faces. This face here and this face here. So first, I had this face pre-selected. I'm going to rotate around. Again, I'm going to hold control. I'm going to select this face. I'm going to release control. And what I want is the limit distance mate. So I'm going to say OK. I don't know my maximum distance yet. We're going to figure that out shortly. I do know my minimum distance is 0 inches. So this is my current distance. This is my minimum. And the max will be set to the current. So I'm going to just change this slightly. I'll make it 5.5. And, and I'll say OK to accept that. And let's see how it behaves. So if I grab this slider, it slides up here and stops. And it'll slide down here and stop. So to figure out how to alter that dimension to get it correct, I'm going to come to the Evaluate tab and choose Measure. I'm going to measure the distance from this face to this face. And what I need to do is I need to add another 1.175 inches to my limit distance mate. So now that I know that, I'm going to close the measure window. I'm going to expand the slider. I'm going to expand its mates. And I'm going to double click on the limit distance, which will bring it up. So I'll double click again on these dimensions. This is my current distance and this is my max. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to press backspace twice to remove the inches and I'm going to say plus 1.175. Push enter. Now I need to rebuild my assembly and I'll double check it. So now I can come down here till it touches and I can move it up here till it touches and I've completed this simple three-part assembly. I'll put it in the isometric view and I'll save my work.